Hello, my name is Dylan Young. I'm a four-time Sitecore -Core Technology MVP, and today I will be covering how to build community images, uh, asset images, and then install those in your doc instance. Uh, if you find this video useful, please don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Um, that way you can get notified of new videos that I'll be releasing, specifically those on Docker. So today, uh, the community image I'm choosing to create is Cychron uh, by Akshay. The reason I chose this was likely it was going to be a better supported uh, module, as well as it supports 10.1, which there's not many modules. Like I, I, I searched around a decent amount and I could not find many uh, modules that support uh, 10.1. People need to, uh, you know, work on upgrading their modules more. Uh, I see that a lot. But anyways, to start, we'll need to get a package, an item package, aka also a you know package that contains items, but also contains the source files. Uh, so basically the package to install Cychron is what I need. So I'll click on Cychron. And then what I really want to download is the full Sitecore package, the, the zip here. So I will click that and then I will click download instead of viewing raw. That would uh, be crazy. Um, and then I will move to C and then SCWDP. And then I am just going to create a new folder here called Cychron. And I am going to go into it and then I'm going to save this here. Save. And now let's go over that folder. Bring it over from the right here. And so uh, we're in that SCWDP file. You you are a folder. You can call this folder whatever you want. Um, you can do this however you want, whatever method you prefer. I have a lot of clutter in here just because I was playing around with some things I've tried. I was hoping to do a video on Weblog, but um, I had problems getting that into an image correctly. And uh, so I may do a video on that in the future. I need to fix some issues first. So what we just downloaded was placed inside Cychron here and then in here. So we're just going to unzip this and we'll just use 7-zip, but you can just use the Windows out of the box unzipper. Um, and I'll just unzip to the same named folder. And then there's a package file here. Let's just um cut this or move it basically up to the root folder and now what we need to do is we need to just take this package.zip file that we have and we need to convert it into an a Sitecore web deploy package or SCWDP file. So to do that, I've written a script to do to or at least to help with that. So we can go up to SC web or SCWP, um, and we will open this convert file. And I'll just open it and edit it real quick, just to show you the contents of it. So first off, if you haven't already, you need to make sure you download the Azure uh, Sitecore Toolkit. Um, this is a specific download that you can do. I installed the latest of that, and I just have that sitting in the tools folder inside the SCWDP uh, folder. So if you're wanting to install community modules, you're, you're going to need that uh, package provided by Sitecore. Typically, this is used for uh, Azure Pass uh, module deployments, but this also relates to Docker as well. And then we just need to import those, and then we need to run this convert to SC module web deploy package. This path is already correct. See SCWDP slash Sitecron slash package dot zip. And then this path is also correct. So we're just going to basically pass in the package.zip and then it's going to output a SCWDP file. And so there's no modifications we actually need to make to that. So all we need to do now is we're in that root and we just need to run uh, convert.ps1. And that's it. And now it just takes takes that package file and converts it over to a SE, a Sitecore web deploy package. And so we go back to Sitecron, and now you should see our package, SEWTP. Now, 
You don't necessarily need to go through that process if you're installing a module that does not contain Sitecore items, but because this does, you'll need th that process because what it does is it creates a DAC pack um, DAC pack files that represent the changes that you need to make to SQL or Sitecore items, essentially. So we're just going to extract that. We just want the contents of it. And so it's here. And so there's a few things here. We need these DAC pack files, like I just mentioned, and we also need this content folder. So we'll just copy these. And now I'm going to move these into a different folder in this SCWDP. I have this Docker create folder and I have an old one. I left it there because I want to copy some files from it, but I'm going to call this Cycron, if I can spell correctly. And then I'm just going to go into here and paste those um, files that I said I need to move over. So the first step is we need to have this in a certain file structure we can't just run it like this. What we're trying to do next and what we're trying to accomplish is that we want to build a Docker image from these contents, but we have to get everything in a certain folder structure. So the first folder we need is a module folder. Then within that module folder, we need a DB file or DB folder. Then we need a CM folder. This would contain the files that are specific to CM. These are files as in maybe views, maybe uh, DLL files, app config changes, etc. Um, and then inside that CM, we're going to add a content folder. And so we now have the folder structure we need, so we can just kind of go back to the root. And what I want to do is I'm going to cut this, these DAC packs, and we can now place these in the correct folder in the DB. And we'll come back to this in a second. And then back up to the top, go into content, website, and then we're just going to cut these as well. Cut. Back to the top, into module, CM, content, and then paste these here. And that's it for this path. We don't need to make any more changes there. I'm going to delete this content folder because this is what was uh, from that Sitecore web deploy package. We don't need it anymore. We just need this module folder. And then one last change uh, that caught me off guard that I forgot you needed to do is we actually need to rename these. Um, these can't just be core.tagpack. We actually have to call them sitecore.core.tagpack or otherwise you're going to have uh, some errors during the installation process in your the, the creation of the image will work just fine, but when you try to actually install these in your uh, base Sitecore instance um, as a, a image or as a module to install, you're going to have issues. So that's good there. Um, back up. That's good. So really what we need now is we need to, I'm going to copy two files out of our backup folder that I had. I'll cover these in a second, don't worry. Um, these are your Docker build commands and I actually added a uh, ignore file as well, just so it ignores. Uh, the ignore file, all it contains is one uh, line item and that line item is to say ignore the Docker file. So it won't pull the Docker file into our image which is not really what we want. What we really are trying to do is build a new image that contains this folder in the C drive. So uh, let's open up Visual Studio real quick and let's make sure I pick up the right one. So let's open up. So this is, I, I basically already have this open and this represents the folder structure that we were just looking at. So Docker Create is here. Um, and then Cycron is our folder that we were working on. There's a modules folder. And then here's our new files that I just, just just dropped in. Like I said, Docker ignore, all it contains is saying any Docker file to ignore. And then our Docker file. The Docker file is super basic. Um, all it includes is a, a kind of a base image of the Microsoft Nano Server uh, 1809. And that's a common um, tag version to use for 
uh, these asset images. So you will never need to really change this unless they upgrade or, or do some things in the future. Um, but for now, this is all you need. And so you can hard code it. And then you just need a simple copy. Um, so this copy, all it does is takes, uh, when it's doing this Docker build process, which we're gonna show here in a second, all it's gonna do is take the root of Cycron basically. And in that case, it's gonna take this module folder and it's going to copy it from the current directory that we're in, but we're gonna then copy it into the image itself. So uh, copy from current uh, relative path to the C drive in our image. And that's really all that is needed. So next step is now we can talk about uh, building the the image, um, building the image and also pulling it out to Docker Hub. Uh, so let's first take a look at Docker Hub. Um, I have a Docker Hub account for Psycho Master. So everything will have Psycho Master in its name. And then as you can see, I've created a repository already called Psychor 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 Psychron. And so this contains what we're gonna be doing today. I already technically have the image uploaded uh, and pushed, but I'll mimic the behavior and just show the steps that you would go through to push up an image. Um, so if you were doing this for the first time for your module that you wanted to make publicly available, keep in mind, this is not a private repository, this is a, a public one. You would go up to repositories and you would just create a new one. So I have a couple others here. I have one for Weblog, I have one for, I have one for Cychron. I'm not sure what, oh, this must have been a mistake I made a little while ago. I wondered, um, I had an issue with something. But, um, so if you do a push and you don't actually have the repository already created, it will actually create one for you. So I don't mean to have this one there. Um, I'll cover that in some other video. But back up, up to our Cychron, the, the public view, as everybody will see it, I just put some, I, I'm gonna be putting in information about testing and stuff. There is one caveat to this image that I created. There is an issue where it puts it into the, the templates are being put into a folder that doesn't really exist. And so the templates technically do exist, but you can't navigate to them. Um, so it's an issue I need to resolve. It's definitely something related to this process of creating the image that we're going down. So we have the repository already up. So what we need to do is basically we need to do that build. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna change the directory and I wanna get into that Docker folder, that Docker create folder. So do that. I always forget the structure. Uh, we wanna go into Cycron. I can't spell today. Um, directory. And so now we're in the right directory. Now we can do the Docker build. So the, the, to do a Docker build, we just specify Docker build, and then we need to specify our tag name. Um, for this, it will be Cycle Master. And then I had it as Cycle Cycron. And then I specified a specific tag for this. I noticed that the repository on GitHub was for version 3.2. So I just said, hey, we'll just call it 3.2. Uh, where was my window at? So 3.2.0. Then I, and, and how you define these are up to you. I think I'm kind of following how Sitecor does it. So um, it's helpful. I just mentioned the version of, of this, what it's for, because there's probably DLLs that are dependent on that version of Sitecore. So I might create another um, tagged version of this that would be 3.2.0.10.0, for example, or 9.3 or, or whatever it may be. And then lastly, uh, I forgot what the last one was. Um, just go back up to here. Um, I think I, I give it the, um, yeah, I just, I just call it uh, 1809. So going back to the Visual Studio real quick, um, because the Docker file specifies 1809 as the OS version, I just use that um, in my 
tagged version as well. Just so anybody that's going to go install this, they know if they're running, they want 3.2 of Cycron and they want uh, 10.1 and then 1809 would be the common one. Doesn't necessarily need to be specified there. Um, then it's all there to be uh, used. And then lastly, you would just have a phrase, uh, do space and a dot. Dot means the current directory. So technically we could run this in a different folder for the current folder, uh, just by specifying the path where the Docker file exists. And so uh, we will do that. And technically I already have it. So, um, so what this does is it actually creates this image locally. Um, so it exists not necessarily out in Docker Hub yet. I need to push that, that image after I do a build. Technically, you could combine the commands, but um, I think it's kind of easier to just kind of see the steps. 3.2.0, 10 10.1. 1809. So all we need, all we're doing here is we're taking the, we're, we've done the build. It's now an image locally. We can do a Docker compose up and we don't have to do a build again or anything like that. It's ready to go, but let's get that out into our public registry. So we're just pushing it up. I really haven't made any changes to what I last had there. So uh, you can just keep running a push if you wanted to, and it will just keep updating it uh, with the same files. So uh, we are set to go just to show Docker Hub real quick, just to show that it did update. Uh, we'll do a refresh. And you'll see it updated a few seconds ago. Tags. And you can also see, and this is the public, or public view that everybody else would see. Uh, it says last push a few seconds ago. So if and when I fix this template issue that I was referring to, I will just push up a new image and then that's what people can use. Um, it shouldn't prevent people from using this module, but um, what's great about this is that I can push up a new image, tell everybody, hey, pull the latest. Um, and so the next time they do a, a full Docker build process and pull the latest image, they'll have the fixes in it. Not really a whole lot of re rework that's needed if if somebody changes one of the images that everybody's using to build their base uh, Docker Sitecore instance from. So um, so that's that that completes that. So we're we're done. We've we've basically created a custom Sitecore um, community based module asset image. That's a mouthful. Um, and so it's up and anybody can pull this now. Anybody that wants to use this asset image in their, um, in their own Docker instances can now do that. So let's get on to the next part of this video. Um, if you watch my video on horizon, this is a very similar process, a little simpler because we're not creating a new service or anything like that. Um, but we're just basically taking the assets of this module, the DAC packs and the uh, CM content, and then we're going to overlay those into our CM instance inside our training videos. So let's go over to our what we were using for Horizon. Um, not much has changed. I may have made some slight modifications. There's a few things actually I need to do. I need to, I must have just done a um a docker composed down just recently so i just want to make sure that these folders are clean and there's, there's a lot of files there um i also like to do a docker system prune and dash f just says force um and most of these images probably came from our cycron build that we just did so you get all these kind of dangling images every time you do a Docker build, and it's a good idea to just prune those. So this Docker system prune is not deleting images that you have built and ready to run. These are just um, uh, related to dangling images that you don't want um, and don't need for anything really. So um, let's go back to our Visual Studio code solution. Uh, like I said, this is exactly, if you watch the Horizon video, 
this is the same solution that we we're using for that. There's a lot of uh, files here and things like that. Let's just close everything. Close all and just shrink everything back down. So to get started with this, I'm actually going to make the changes to the images to start um, our Docker files that represent those images for CM and MS SQL. Uh, super easy changes for that. Uh, so to access that, we go up to the Docker folder. We go to build. And then we're going to make changes to the CM first. So we'll open up that Docker file. And then what we need to do is we're passing in that site cron image. So we just need to have a parameter or a basic an argument for that. So site cron image, that's the argument. And then we'll just define what that is here as site cron. I made a mistake earlier when I was running this test example. I didn't name it here. And so when I used a from uh, Cycron down here, it didn't know what image I was trying to refer to. So it was causing issues. Um, so just make sure you always name them up here when you pass in this parameter. And then lastly, we just need to basically overlay the, the module CM content from our Cycron image. We're going to take those files and we're going to overlay them into our new CM image that we're creating. So uh, just for naming or uh, efficiency purposes, I'm just going to call this the same label as above. That's a lot of what this is. And we are going to just call it Cycron, or not name it, but call it that. And and then we're just going to go to module CM content, same as before. And then we're just saying from this folder into the current working directory, which is CINET pub uh, WW root. So we're just copying these files from this image into the this this path and uh, kind of overlaying them. So um, I don't know what happens when it finds conflicts, but usually you're not going to find conflicts when you're working with modules like this. So that's the CM instance. Let's save that real quick. And then lastly, uh, MS SQL is the other one. There is no solar indexes or anything like that. Um, same as before, just need to have a Cycron image here. And same as, as above. I like to leave the base one last. Cron image. Hopefully my spelling won't get me in trouble today. Just call it Cycron, and then I just like to copy this, but it's essentially the same same lines, just a slight slight bits of changes. We're in this case we're we're taking those DAC pack files and we're using a deploy PS1 script that will uh, ha handle the deployment of that. Uh, we just need to make sure that this all represents Cycron. Cycron. And Cycron. I mean, you can really see how this is, is, is the more you use Docker, the, the more you realize how superior this method is. So down the road, you want to add a new module to your solution. Um, you, you really, you could do a one-off uh, package install just to see what the output of that would be. But as soon as you're ready for that to go live, um, you basically would just uh, add this definition, add it to your images the same way I'm doing right now. Um, you may not push out to a public registry for the community image. Uh, this could be a, you know, a private image that you've created that does some sort of piece of functionality. Um, I was thinking about um, some companies might have like a predefined, you know, way they like to build their sites. And so they could have kind of the scaffolding and things like that already defined. And then, you know, when they first start out a Docker project, they can just install that and then it's, it's set to go. Um, and then the support of that is just, you know, hey, 
you know, we've made updates to that module. We'll do a new Docker build, push out to our ACR or, or ECR or wherever, if it's public, um, and then just pull those uh, changes into our, our, our process. Uh, pretty powerful piece of functionality there. Um, anyways, got kind of <laughs> sidetracked because I, I just started thinking about um, just how awesome that is. Um, so that's all we need. I just sometimes I make silly mistakes um, when I do these videos, so I just wanted to double check. That all looks good. So and we named that and we have that arc. So now we have all the Docker files updated. These will now contain our Cyclone uh, asset image in there and then uh, basically output the, the things it needs in this case databases and install the backpacks or in the case of cm uh, do an overlay of those file changes so the last thing we need to do is we need to basically pass in these images as part of our docker compose process now you could make those as part of docker-compose.yaml but as you have maybe seen from my SUCCON presentation or or in vi other videos is we we never want to do that to the docker-compose.yaml we'll make that change to the override file instead so here is and and we really can't make it as part of docker compose as, as another point to make is because we don't really have the build arcs definitions in here anyways so Anyways, back to the override file. So what we need to do is just make or pass in those images as part of MS SQL and as part of CM. Now, I don't know what the image is off the top of my head because I can't remember. Actually, I can remember. I've done this video, I've done this prep up to this enough times that I can remember what it is. Um, so we need to have, and this needs to match that args parameter that we specified. We just need to have this. So this is MS SQL, we're passing that in. Um, we don't have, we could set some variables in our .env file if we wanted to, but we're not going to here. I'm just gonna specify it directly. Sitecore master, sitecore sitecron, and then the, the tagging that we we chose so this was 3.2.0 and then it was 10.1 and then it was 18.09 so that's all we need and I'll copy that so I'll type it again and then that's exactly actually I could copy the whole thing because it's exactly the same line we'll need for other CM so we can just go here and paste it in save that and now we're good we're ready to go uh, nothing else we, we need to do other than do a docker build because we basically have made changes to our cm and our ms sql so now we have to do a fresh build so let's go back into our terminal and into the root of sitecore docker training and so the first thing is i just want to do a docker build so i'm going to do a docker compose build this will actually take our Docker Compose file and then do a build of all the um, all our definitions inside of all our services inside of that. Um, one other additional command is I like to just specify no cache just in case there is something cached. I've had some weird issues in the past where uh, something seems cached and then for some reason it did get updated, but it's cached so it doesn't get built again. So. This is all we need to do. There's all, there's other commands, but this is the way I prefer to do it. I, I prefer to do a build first, know that the build works, and then I can also system prune those um, those uh, uh, dangling images, and then I can do a Docker compose up, and then we can get going. So let's just run that. All right, uh, as you can see, it's complete. Uh, I just want to show real quick by scrolling back up all the commands that run here. But obviously, here's where it ran the Cycron. It's it basically just publishes or deals with that DAC pack that we created or the two DAC packs. Uh, the reason you have to add Sitecore to the front is that it would if you did not do that to the file name for some reason, um, it doesn't just naturally do this. 
uh, able to try to install to the database core by itself or master by itself. So just FYI, the naming conventions is based on the name of the database inside your SQL instance. Um, and that's why you call it sitecore.core.dacpack, not just core.dacpack. And, and keep that in mind if you had other things that you were installing, um, you know, just make sure you follow that naming convention, make sure the database name matches the file name. And so we're done. Uh, I just, so like I said, I just like to do a Docker system prune just to clear out. I'm on a 16 gig laptop. I'm actually going to be getting a new computer tomorrow uh, with 64 gigs of hard of RAM. So uh, hopefully these days of trying to keep my system kind of lean um, so it doesn't overwhelm itself uh, or over. Um, but yeah. So Docker system prune, this usually prunes about a gig. So there you go, a gig. Um, and so I uh, just want to make sure I did clean data. I think I already did, but this can cause problems if you don't do that. And now you do a doc pose up, you might find that your, your changes aren't there um, because the MDB files have already been initialized and now you're doing doc pose up. Um, and it's just going to use the MDB files of what already existed. It's not going to reinitialize those with your changes that should be a part of it. So we can do a doc close up now. And sometimes I have uh, problems while I run this. Um, if I do, I usually have to re uh, restart Docker. Um, but hopefully today I don't have those issues. And again, I think this, this one is especially related to memory. Um, that uh, with a new desktop, um, I should no longer have to deal with those issues. So let's wait till this is complete. All right, as you can see, it has now completed the Docker Compose process, Docker Compose up, that is. Um, so it can sometimes take a few seconds. Uh, let's just go over here. Looks like it's still 404 ing for those that I haven't shared this with yet, um, the, this 404 is coming from traffic, not from our CM instance. So um, usually if the CM is unhealthy, you'll see this, or if it's still being initialized or something like that, you could see this. And so you just need to wait a few more seconds. This is definitely not uncommon. It'd be cool if they had some sort of splash screen, just so it would say, hey, we're waiting for CM to spin up. You know, but anyways, that's a off topic, but let's refresh. Let's, I'll pause this while I wait. Didn't have to wait long. Uh, a few seconds later, it decided to start uh, coming up. So it's now thinking, obviously there's warm ups and stuff that doesn't happen. So first thing it does, you're trying to go to, a, I think it was the launch pad we were trying to go to. It's going to take us right to a dating server just to log in. Um, our password is admin B, the famous site core password. Log in. And then it will take us back to uh, our CM instance after it authenticates the user using a dating server. And maybe at some point I'll do a video on a dating server. Something I know pretty well. Just going to wait for it here. All right, we're going to take us to the launch pad. Sometimes it randomly seems to take us to not to the launch pad, but if you want to go to the launch pad, just click that button up top left. And now you can see the, the fancy new launch pad, um, which indicates we're A, using Sitecore 10.1, but also says, hey, we uh, have things working. So let's just prove that Sitecron is working. So we can go into our content editor. I will show you the problem I'm referring to with templates. Uh, like I said, you know, you'll know when you pull this down if you have that issue or not. It's kind of actually kind of a cool almost feature the way it's set up um, 
which I'll show here in a second, but um, but it is a bug, so it needs to be resolved, and uh, I'll work on, on trying to resolve that. So we're in the content editor, and like I said, if you go into system modules, here is Cycron. So proves that it proves a few things. It proves a um, that we have items in here. So items, in my opinion, are the hardest thing to add into your your instance. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, also, um, you know, we can't see it, but we actually could see it. If we go back to Visual Studio real quick, just to just to prove that this stuff is here. Um, so we're going to go into our Docker um, panel. Uh, make sure you install a Docker extension if you're interested in that that panel. Um, and we're just going to go to the CM instance real quick. We can open up that, open up files, and we can go to INET Pub. WW Roots. Apologize for the snoring dog behind me. And now we should, and I don't know exactly where some of this stuff is. Uh, I think that config is what I'm looking for. One of the complaints I have of Visual Studio Code is that viewing files seems really slow sometimes. Almost unbearable, in fact. Actually, it seemed to have some issues there. So, quickest way is you can right click on this and just say attach shell. And so the shell is what we're seeing. Um, and now we go CD. Yeah. There, cd um, app config and include and just see what's there directory. And this is on our instance. So what we're just looking for is just confirmation that one we can see Horizon here, um, but we can also see this Z Cycron folder. So all the files are there for Cycron are. Uh, database items that are there, or the uh, items for 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 Cycor are there, so we are good. Um, other than if you click on this item, it's template. Give it a second. It's template. Quick info. Um, its template is set to Cycron, Cycron folder. Um, so obviously that's not correct because I would assume it's actually at the same level as Cycor here. Um, so that's an issue, but it works. Um, kind of a cool feature because you can't actually edit templates. No one can. <laughs> um, so maybe that's a feature. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think it's something that we sh should be resolved. So, um, my assumption as a, is that the backpack contains items to insert. The parents of this folder have invalid IDs for some reason or don't even have IDs. So when it inserts those database records, it just doesn't know how to, you know, materialize this path. So anyways, that's, uh, that's it. Um, so hopefully uh, everyone goes through the video successfully just like I did and gets to the end result like I did. Um, obviously the asset images, same process across the board, no matter if it's Sitecore core modules or community supported modules or even, you know, company supported modules, um, you know, same process to get them installed. And then, um, and then, uh, you know, 
it, it's up to you if you want to push them up to a Docker hub or if you have a uh, private uh, container registry such as a, a, ACR or ECR or, or any of the others out there. Uh, you can also push into those, but you'll have to make sure you Docker login as well. I didn't show that actually, uh, Docker doc, Docker login, and then you just log in to your account um, with Docker Hub. All right. Uh, all right. Please uh, make sure to uh, subscribe or like this video, like I said at the start, um, and good luck.